Welcome back to Movie Recap. Today I'm gonna show you a 2018 war drama film called, Wunderland, also known as, The Battle of the Bulge. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins with a narration affirming the last major German offensive campaign during World War II, which was the Battle of the Bulge on the Western Front. Ill-advisedly, a surprise attack made the Allied forces completely off guard as the enemies made a final push against them. The battle happened early on the misty winter morning in December 1944, wherein the German troops containing 200,000 soldiers had launched 1,000 tanks to reverse the outcome of the war for Hitler's last bid. Technically, the defense force has left no choice, but to spend their Christmas on the field, and fight for their lives to survive and go home safely. However, the Germans struck in the Ardennes forest upon seeking to drive to the coast of the English Channel, and splitting the Allied armies, hoping they would have done it successfully like what they did in 1940. Then, during the Battle of the Bulge, the battle-worn American soldiers held a 75-mile stretch of the front characterized by dense woods and few roads. Upon holding a vital road junction against the German aggressors, the American soldiers were stationed in the forest for rest and seasoning. Later, Lt. Robert Kappa, known as Jean, lays down on the ground while holding his rifle, watching the German aggressors from behind as they guard the road junction against them. However, one of Kappa's men from his platoon of 2nd Infantry Division, whose name's Rock, suddenly approaches him from behind. So, Jean moves his eyes to see Rock's figure in his peripheral vision, then orders him that they're going to hit the German after confirming that it's him. Afterward, Rock copies Jean's order, raising his hand to signal the rest of their platoon to move for an attack. However, Jean can't wait any longer, so he suddenly stands up and walks toward his men, commanding them to shoot first and second on the left. Then, for the last, Jean instructs his third man to shoot first on the right. Afterward, Jean moves his position in front to lead the attack when suddenly he watches the Germans shoot again. So, Jean loads his ammo, and points the gun toward the direction of the attacking Allied armies. Once he positioned the gun, Jean immediately hits the German soldiers in front, allowing the enemies to strike back. However, Jean's platoon quickly backs him up to kill the rest of the German aggressors, making the others abort while some continue fighting against Jean's platoon. Because of that, Jean's platoon mercilessly finishes off the Germans when suddenly Jean sees more enemies approaching them. Technically, the German soldiers who run away earlier aren't surrendering, but call for more backups. Shocked, Jean commands his platoon to fall back while he and Rock take care of the incoming Germans. Afterward, Jean orders Rock to cover him while he runs toward the middle to throw the grenade at them. Fortunately, Jean successfully kills the rest of the Germans in the forest by throwing a grenade, allowing him and his platoon, to move out before the other Germans appear. A while later, Jean goes downstairs to meet the sergeants, talking about the 23rd that was supposed to push into Wallerscheid, but they got all caught up, and eventually got pinned down to be a hostage. Afterward, Jean receives a question from Sergeant Roberts, wanting to know about their situation in the field. Upon taking a cup of coffee from Roberts, Jean reports the unclear state of Sector 2 as they made contact with the enemy. Jean then points out the area on the map while reporting to him, then articulates what they've done in the forest, wherein they took a pack gun and some 42 calibers to pick the way through the minefield. However, Jean's platoon fails to get through as the enemies got 43 calibers and some Betty's pistols. Suddenly, Sergeant Joe joins their conversation, informing Roberts about S2 reporting with boys and older men from the 192nd in the area. But Jean clarifies, saying that those are the SS, Hitler's bodyguard unit known as the Schutzstaffel. Though doubtful, Roberts asks Jean what he's thinking. Jean answers, and says they're not boys and older men. Refusing to believe Kappa's opinion, Roberts orders Joe to get back to gate S2, and have them double-check their intelligence again because Roberts doesn't want any surprises. Afterward, he informs Jean that he will pull the 23rd out as they're not going to do anything for this day. However, Jean suddenly volunteers, so Roberts orders him and his platoon, to hold a vital road junction against the German aggressors. Technically, Jean's platoon will fill the holes in the line at Lanzarote. Then, before Jean leaves the headquarters, Roberts warns him to stay warm because the division field hospital reports hundreds of cases of frostbite. Afterward, Jean's platoon plans on catching a ride with Miller's troops despite receiving weary sighs from his men. While waiting for their departure, Jean, and Rock, enter a cozy room as they talk about how long they've been doing things in the war to protect their country. Eventually, Rock points out that he's getting tired of putting himself to fight against the enemies because it seems like the Krauts aren't finished killing them all. Rock then asks about them going to the quiet part of the line, so Jean clarifies that they call it the front for a reason. Later, Rock and Jean walk toward Miller's tank to join their troops as Jean eventually gives thanks to Miller for allowing them to lift above the vehicle. 
Afterward, Gene and Miller's platoon drive their way to the front. A few minutes later, Gene's platoon finally arrives at the Lanzarote's line and begins to patrol. While walking, Gene and Rock suddenly share a conversation, and talk about the last time they had a quiet atmosphere before entering the military. Technically, Gene points out that they haven't had quite surroundings since they hit the beaches of Normandy. Because of that, Rock eventually asks a question, wanting to hear Gene's thoughts about their mission because he's overthinking how they are supposed to hold the line if their space so thin. So, Gene says that their enemies are only young boys and older men. After a while, Gene's platoon finally sees the holes they're going to fill in. Afterward, Gene orders Rock to interlock fields of fire with the bar in 30 minutes. So, Rock copies his order, and repeats the tasks he'll do, which are the outposts on the heads, and communication spread down, while Gene will contact the 106 boys on their left. Then, after clarifying their tasks, Rock informs Gene that he'll get Rudy over there to set up the radio. Afterward, Gene and Rock separate ways while bringing some of their troops to team up. However, while Gene's platoon holds the line, they suddenly meet Miller and his troops. So, Gene's man reports that there's light incoming after Miller asks about the enemy's movement. Afterward, Miller talks about Jerry, who has two horse-drawn artillery pieces covering the whole sector. So, Gene presumes that the Krauts might be finished hunting on the Lanzarus line to find them. Afterward, Gene proceeds on patrolling, leaving Miller in his area, when suddenly they find some of their allies from Boys 99. So, Gene immediately approaches them, and introduces himself as the Lieutenant of 23rd. Then, Gene clarifies that they're going to plug some gaps in their lines and not relieve them. Unfortunately, Gene receives a report from his ally that their captain gets lost a few days back due to crowd artillery that hit his chest. Afterward, the new commander tours Gene and his men, to the CP while continuously reporting that there are few MPs on jeeps who came through the morning. Suddenly, the commander points out that maybe the Germans are finished because it's already Christmas, and the surroundings have been quiet lately. Though Gene agrees, he still proceeds with his task, and orders the new commander to connect his CP while he runs the wire over. Meanwhile, Roberts receives a report from Joe, saying that the first and second are in position for their push on Walterscheid. Unfortunately, Joe says he has no news about Gene's platoon yet. However, Joe eventually opens up to Roberts, saying that he'll be more comfortable if Gene leads the attack. Agreeing with Joe's statement, Roberts secondly asks about their friends over at S2, only to find out that German patrols are increasing, and lots of enemy movement is happening. Unfortunately, their reconnaissance planes, fighters, and bombers are grounded due to limited visibility. Leaving them no air support, Roberts expresses downfall on his face, then thinks what are the Germans up to for doing such a thing like that to them. On the other hand, Miller orders Mac to stop moving the tank as he sees something move behind the trees. Suddenly, Miller catches an anti-tank gun in the trees, so he immediately orders Mac to blow up the artillery and attack the enemy. However, Mac fails to hit the anti-tank from afar, getting themselves killed after they get blown up by the artillery of the Germans. Meanwhile, Rock scolds Danny for idly digging the foxhole when suddenly he sees Gene approaching him. Fortunately, Rock receives good news from Gene, he successfully gets the enemy spaced out the best he can. Afterward, Rock talks about them getting food and plenty of ammo despite having no turkey dinner. Suddenly, Rock asks Gene if they can make a hold once the Krauts make a push, so Gene answers yes. However, Rock still feels uneasy, and says that their men will follow Gene until they die for defending the line. But Gene gives no reply to his statement. Afterward, Rock shows Gene his new home, a small shelter that he made for Gene so he won't be staying in the foxhole anymore. After getting some rest inside his shelter, Rock eventually calls Gene to report a firefight to the east. So, Gene immediately stands up to see Rudy, only to find out that he got a scrambled message earlier from the 99 boys, but couldn't make anything out as the line went dead afterward. So, Gene orders Rudy to keep trying while he and Rock get back to their line when suddenly a massive explosion from cannon falls on the ground. Because of that, the two lie down in the hole, and hide from the explosion, not sure if the Germans are making a push. Afterward, Gene returns to his base to inform the platoon to get ready while he orders their combat medic to give them a little more morphine as he finds a hole to hide. On the other hand, Rock commands his platoon to keep their head down because the Germans are making a push. Eventually, Gene and Rock's troops get their rifles ready as they see the Germans walking in their direction. Suddenly, one of his men begins shooting, surprising the Germans with their attack as Gene and Rock's platoon continuously shoots them. Fortunately, the Germans fall back after watching their colleagues get killed. Technically, Gene has left no choice, but to kill the young boys and older men during the firefight. Meanwhile, Roberts receives reports about the Kraut movement, infantry, tanks, 
etc. Then write down the Elsenborn Road, which is the weakest point of their lines, could be a major German offensive. Eventually, Joe reveals to Roberts that their flanks are in danger of getting exposed, and once they cut off, they'll be surrounded by the attacking Allied armies. Shocked, Robert stands up to see the map, then points out that the Germans have to get to the crossroads up Estonia down to St. Vith first before Joe confirms that it's a major German offensive. However, once they cross the Meuse River, they will get a straight bath to the English Channel and the port of Antwerp. So, once it happens, the Germans will cut them off, and the British in half as four entire armies surrounded with no supplies behind enemy lines. Suddenly, Roberts finds out that the Lanzi Ranth is the only road that'll support German armor. So, he immediately prepares to get into Jean's line, and check what's going on. On the other hand, Jean and Rock almost get killed by the crowd, but luckily, they are way faster to kill them first. Eventually, Jean finds out that it's the tank support from the SS, so he immediately orders Rock to get to the crossroads as they get their second and third squad at their flanks. Technically, they need to call for backup, and return to the area where they get attacked by the Krauts. However, Rock finds out that the Germans are trying to flank them and cut them off, so they immediately run off. While Jean, on the other hand, already sends the scouts out as he can't wait for Rock's platoon to come over anymore. Afterward, Jean's squad begins to position themselves as Jean receives a report from his soldier saying that the Germans look like they're overrun. So, Jean orders him to pass the word back as he'll go to the crossroad and check it out. Eventually, Jean attacks alone, and shoots all the Germans when suddenly a young German soldier hits his head, taking Jean as a hostage. On the other hand, Rock plans on rescuing Jean after seeing him getting in the hands of the Germans. Fortunately, Rock successfully saves Jean, and proceeds to return to their line. However, they suddenly see the German at the crossroad, leaving them no choice, but to separate ways, and fight the enemies. Technically, Rock will start throwing grenades at them once he hears Jean's shot from afar. However, Grace suddenly gets killed after he and Rock are throwing grenades inside the Germans' tanks. Leaving him no choice, Rock immediately returns to their lines, and leaves Grace's corpse on the ground. The movie ends with Rudy using the Morse code to report the news to Joe as the Germans are trying to jam on their signal. Eventually, Joe tells Roberts that he made contact with Jean, saying they're at the crossroad at Lonzi Ranth. So, Roberts orders Joe to inform Jean that he'll be on his own while holding the front against the incoming Germans. Afterward, Jean immediately orders his platoon to get ready while Rock, on the other hand, gives him a cup of coffee to relax for a while. Seconds later, Jean's men inform them that many Germans are coming on their way, so they quickly position themselves in their designed holes, waiting for the enemies to come. Then, despite outnumbering the first German troops, Jean suddenly orders his men to retreat and fall back in the woods as he sees more incoming enemies at the crossroads. Unfortunately, the German aggressors caught Jean and Rock after outnumbering them in the forest, taking them both to the crossroad to get them killed. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.